Okay, Ken, thank you very much for the introduction. I assume people can see my first slide. Yes, I can. So uh, welcome everyone as well to uh, Genomic Medicine 13 meeting. It's a pleasure to be here. And to start this meeting, I think it would be helpful to provide a broader context. And since NHGRI has recently published a new strategic vision that provides actually a very um, uh, fresh um, and new context uh, to think about some of the things that are gonna be discussed here. Now, it's also important to keep in mind, of course, that when NHGRI publishes a strategic vision, it comes on the heels of a history of publishing such guiding documents, uh, three that were published along with co-funders during the Human Genome Project that guided the project. And then more recently, uh, since the end of the Human Genome Project, NHGRI has published two such strategic visions. And the one we published recently um, is the third uh, that we published alone as an institute. As we thought about entering this new decade and recognizing that the previous strategic vision um, was published in 2011, we recognized it was time to refresh uh, that vision. Um, as a result, uh, we uh, went forth through a strategic planning process that began in 2018 or so um, that really aimed, if you will, to establish a 2020 vision uh, for human genomics that would guide us uh, throughout this decade. That effort, which involved many of the participants of this GM13 meeting and many, many others involving over 50 events over two plus years, uh, eventually yielded um, a lot of input and a lot of ideas that we eventually synthesized and then ultimately published in a 10 page paper in, uh, in Nature at the very end of October. The thing, and I would also point out that the packet of materials provided as part of this genomic medicine uh, workshop um, includes uh, this uh, a PDF of this strategic vision from um, published in Nature. The most important thing to keep in mind about this 2020 strategic vision compared to previous strategic visions is how much the field has changed, how much genomics is disseminated, and how much we it was impossible for us to focus on all of genomics, but rather we embraced our new organizational mantra, the forefront of genomics, and really aligned the the process of strategic planning to that mantra, but also organize the paper and even include it in the title of the paper, the idea of focusing on the forefront of genomics. What was interesting is by the time we got all the input through all the, all the ways that we captured ideas from the research community, it was very clear that what we were hearing was very heterogeneous in nature. The elements that were gonna come together for this new strategic vision were quite heterogeneous in, in nature. Um, at, at the end of the day, we found that we could categorize these and bin these elements into four major bins that together really provide the kinds of guiding ideas at the forefront of genomics that we felt very much reflected what we wanted to describe in our new strategic vision. The, the, first, uh, the first such um, uh, bin, if you will, really uh, related not so much to scientific projects or even technologies, but rather to guiding principles and values that really undergird all of human genomics. And one of the things we heard that we needed to do as an as NHGRI as a funder was to provide responsible stewardship for really what's going on at the forefront of genomics. And that includes articulating, enhancing, and coming up with new guiding principles and values that undergird uh, the entire community and all those people doing human genomics. And so at the end of the day, we outline nine important guiding principles and values for human genomics in this section of the paper. Another aspect of showing responsible stewardship at the forefront of genomics includes thinking about and enhancing the basic foundation by which everybody does genomics research. And so taking responsibility for sustaining and improving that foundation is beneficial to everybody, those who consider themselves genomicists and those who just use genomics um, in, as part of their daily work, um, even if they don't consider themselves genomicists. And so at the end of the day, there actually were 11 elements that we described that were important for us to think about in terms of sustaining and improving a foundation for genomics in general. Another aspect of having responsible stewardship at the forefront of genomics is thinking about what's impeding progress by others. What are barriers that stand in the way? Maybe the inspirational prototype for this was when 17 years ago, we said a major barrier in genomics was the cost of DNA sequencing. 
And so 17 years ago, we said, let's come up with a thousand dollar human genome sequence by developing technologies that's occurred and wow, knocking that barrier down changed everything. What are the new barriers uh, that are impeding progress for everybody to be able to really uh, be able to contribute using genomic approaches? And at the end of the day, we described six elements that we think are barriers that we would like to see knocked down that would be beneficial if we were successful at that. And then finally, of course, at our heart, we're, we want to do research projects. So what are some of the most compelling genomics research projects really that represent the forefront of genomics that are really compelling that, uh, and at the end, we described six of these um, in the strategic vision. Now, one thing we did new in this strategic vision that we've never done before, but we took it from the playbook um, that's been going on for the NIH strategic plan of late was the idea of not even describing elements, but also maybe making some predictions. And so we had fun by ending the paper describing a set of 10 bold predictions that might come true in human genomics by the end of the decade. These were deliberately meant to be inspirational and aspirational and quite high risk. I can't imagine they're all gonna come true. Even if a couple of them came true, we'd be thrilled. Uh, but they very much um, stimulated conversation and inspired people we believe to think think a little bit out of the box and maybe think about things that they previously hadn't thought about that just might be possible. So that's the general framework for the strategic vision. There is a lot in addition to that, including a lot of materials that fed into the strategic vision through these 50 events and all basic workshops and all sorts of white papers and so forth. If you're interested in digging deeper, we have an, a website that has organized all aspects of the strategic planning process and the actual strategic vision itself. And this is a dynamic, site that we will build on over time as we go forward to, to, to doing things that directly emanate from the strategic vision. So this would always be a good website to keep track of if you want to follow progress going forward. And in fact, that leads me to a very important aspect of really what I want to share with you. And that is that we are now pivoting. You know, we spent two plus years putting together a strategic vision. But now, of course, we're interested in moving from that vision development to actual implementation of the elements of that vision. And it's really important to recognize that the strategic planning process is really essentially over now, although we sort of do it on an ongoing basis. But when we did it intensely for those two plus years, we, came, we heard the ideas and the needs and the proposals and the obstacles that people described. And we, we, we heard an immense amount of information come in and we attempted to synthesize that information. And at the end of the day, we were able to write this out the best we could in 10 pages of the journal Nature. And that, of course, was published in October. But of course, what we now need to do is to take, we can't take everything we heard and execute it, but we could take a subset of that. And we could take the most important things that we think need to be implemented, at least by us as a funding agency, and specifically turn those, a subset of those ideas into specific projects, into programs, into initiatives, in some cases will involve new policies. And so we really have begun to shift quite aggressively, in fact, have already been doing it for a number of months, from having the development of the strategic vision to actually implementing that vision. Let me give you a couple of examples. We were going to enter 2021 uh, standing, on our, standing on our feet or leaning back on our heels. We were going to be on our toes and we were ready to move forward. So we deliberately were ready to start launching some new things. And we decided um, there was one topic in particular that we thought was such high priority, we were going to lead with that as we entered 2021. If I just take you back to the strategic uh, vision itself, under the guide, this is actually a topic that came up not once, but twice in the strategic vision. First, in the guiding principles and values section, on this box that featured these guiding values and principles, we really called out the idea that we need to champion a diverse genomics workforce because the promise of genomics cannot be fully achieved without attracting, developing, and retaining a diverse workforce, which includes individuals from groups that are currently underrepresented in the genomics enterprise. NHGRI feels very strongly that this has to be among one of the highest priority things we need to be uh, dealing with, addressing, and aggressively pursuing. It's not surprising, therefore, that then later when we came to writing the robust foundation for genomics, indeed this came up again, and we talk about the need to foster a diverse genomics workforce. And I'll let you read this when you look at the strategic vision where we describe in a little more detail what we want to do in that area. 
articulating it twice in the strategic vision, you knew this was going to be important to us. And so we deliberately had ready to go as we entered this new year, um, a set of actions that we wanted to move forward to start to address this very challenging, but very important area. Specifically, in the first week of January, we released on our website, and you can see a specific web page and a URL there, an action agenda, as we call it, an action agenda for building a diverse genomics workforce, and particularly to describe and to get word out about this action agenda. My senior advisor for genomics and health disparities, Ben Sponham, and I published a commentary. Actually, it's the very first paper in the American Journal of Human Genetics in 2021 where we articulate some of the elements that are in this larger and longer action agenda. This is the central graphic um, from uh, both the action agenda and also published in our commentary. And it, I'll let you read the goals, but needless to say, we recognize the need to address issues around the diversity of the workforce at multiple stages of somebody's professional existence from very early on in their education all the way through what, uh, active researchers who are performing genomics research. So there's much under that, that when you read the action agenda, we are moving forward with some funding opportunities you'll be hearing about in the coming weeks and months um, that we hope will stimulate and move towards the goals that we articulate in this action agenda. We regard this as a very important high priority area. And I will also tell you, we are working with uh, a number of partners as in this arena, particular professional societies, American Society of Human Genetics, American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics, American Society of Genetic Counselors. All of, uh, we, we need to bring in as many people as possible to address this very important aspect of genomics. In addition, we have a number of other initiatives and time doesn't really allow me to describe these in great detail. I just wanna mostly make you realize there's a lot going on. Um, in terms of new initiatives directly emanating out of the strategic vision, I've just talked about this first action agenda. Indeed, there's a series of others. I'll just show you these. Some of these actually we started sort of last year uh, before the actual publication. It's not like we waited for the publication and then acted on things we knew were going to be in the strategic vision. Some of these things just for a variety of logistical and funding reasons we needed to get out of the gate earlier. Others are things that are out already um, in terms of uh, different stages of funding opportunities or getting funding into people's hands and so forth. Um, but but th these are all things that were now are now public. By the way, I will point out under bullet number two, uh, related more broadly to training, some of you may have heard that earlier, or I guess uh, last year, working with our advisory council, NHGRI has basically committed to increase the amount of resources we are investing in training writ large, with a goal of maybe increasing it by upwards of 50% over the next five years. Um, in particular, we have, again, funding opportunities that will be coming out and, and we're talking about in some specific areas. I just am highlighting here things that are particularly relevant to genomic medicine implementation that some of you might be particularly interested in, um, but all of these I think would be of, of interest to, to many of you, um, but I just wanted to highlight just a few, and I and my colleagues from NHGRI are happy to answer questions about any of these if you have them. Um, lastly, I guess I'll just put in um, a, a shameless plug, but maybe it's something that you would be interested in. We have found that the 10 bold predictions have, att have attracted a lot of um, press interest and just a, a lot of even community interest because they're sort of fun and they're really things that make us lean forward. And so we actually wanted to have a life associated uh, with the strategic vision in terms of a seminar series. It's a virtual seminar series, you might imagine. But um, we are now having a 10 part um, series on these bold predictions, one a month. We just had the first one like a little over a week ago or something like that. Um, and um, we all have 10 of them um, throughout the year. Um, and I just look at the URL. We are video recording all these. We'll make them available. We had a huge audience even for the first bold prediction, but we're having two speakers come in each time and also have a moderated discussion associated with each session. So uh, we've been getting word out about this, but look at this webpage if you're interested. This should be a great 10 part uh, series associated with those bold predictions. So in closing, I introduced this idea that these earlier chapters of strategic visions have been so important for the community. It's been so important for NHGRI. We certainly hope this latest one will similarly uh, be uh, valuable and really help guide the field, but in particular guide NHGRI um, in the coming decade. If you wanna keep up to date and wanna learn more, I can assure you that both through my monthly newsletter and through my uh, Twitter account, we will keep you informed about all aspects of implementing the strategic vision, as well as other things going on at the Institute and in the genomics community. 
So with that, I will stop and I'm happy to take any questions. Sorry, I needed to unmute my, unmute my screen. Thank you, Eric. So the help, so people understand how to ask questions. Um, there's a Q&A feature at the bottom of the tool at the Zoom feature. Um, you can post your questions using the Q&A feature. And um, we also have, uh, you can also raise your hand. Um, Eric, we do have one question in the chat. Um, one is from uh, uh, Jeff, uh, who's asking, if you look across uh, NIH, is the agenda for the GM13 unique to NHGRI or are there opportunities for us to work with other ICs and should we? For specifically around GM13. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, I would, I mean, I, I think there's tremendous overlap uh, with, with some parts of NIH more than others. Um, but but I, I, I don't think the, the way I, now obviously I see how the, the workshop plays out. The way I'm looking at GM13 is that it certainly has uh, things in common with other parts of NIH, certainly all of us research program comes to mind, but other, other institutes that are really trying to harness clinical information in creative ways where clinical informatics is gonna become very important, obviously bringing the genomics component in, but everybody's bringing the genomics component in. So I think we sh one of the things we probably should get out of this workshop is what are the most likely other parts of NIH that we should immediately uh, make sure we are synergizing with. I don't know, maybe some of them are participating in the meeting. Um, in, in this particular workshop, but I, I, we're, we're not alone by any means at NIH in this space. Yeah, um, if I could just follow up, I, I, uh, I, I, this is a huge topic. I imagine that there would be others. And as you said, I think uh, uh, I'll leave it up to, to, to Mark and, and Ken, but you know, if, if we could figure out ways to channel some of the uh, output of this meeting to work more um, synergistically with other groups, I think we'll have greater impact. That's just my opinion. Anyone have any, any questions? Any other questions? So Eric, I actually asked, I have a question. Um, for this um, new vision, um, is there, how would, you, how would you measure success for this? Or going for the Institute and the community? It's a, that, just addressing all of these efforts, or is there some critical critical ones that we really have to pay, that we should pay attention to, that you think are low lying fruit ones and more complex ones that we're going to take more effort to do? Uh, I mean, it, it probably speaks to a much broader set of issues of how do we measure success at anything at NIH, um, let alone how do we measure success um, uh, specifically um, aligned with uh, strategic documents. Um, you know, here, here's what I would say. Uh, one way, we, I, we, we really thought about this a lot over the last 10 years, at least during my, my tenure as NHGRI, there's now 11 years. Like we published the, the 2011 strategic vision roughly a little over a year after I've been director. And I asked and many of my staff heard, you know, multiple times, when's the time to, to write, to come up with a new strategic vision? When's the time to come up with a new strategic vision? We reached a point by about 2016, 2017, when we pull out the 2011 strategic vision and we'd read it, and we say, my gosh, we've actually done most of these things. This thing really is starting to look very gray. That's one measure of success is when you feel like you're missing a lot, that you've done a lot of these things and then there's a lot of things you're not articulating. Now, that's not very quantitative by any means, um, but you know, some, some goals are easier to measure than others. Obviously the cost of sequencing was a really easy goal to measure. Um, you know, number of rare diseases, you know the genomic basis of, that's a number you can count. But a lot of the other things are a little more difficult. Um, but uh, you know, so I think it's a combination of things. You know, but I will say that I do think for some of these things, you know, and even if um, I do, I, I do want the institute to pay a little more attention to to maybe uh, from the beginning putting into place things that will allow us to monitor progress. And as a subtle point on the action agenda, I went over very quickly. But if you look at goal number four out of four goals, the fourth goal is to monitor progress. Because we don't wanna just say, let's enhance diversity of the genomics workforce, and then 10 years later, not really know whether we've made progress or not. And so committing early to one of the four goals being measuring progress, I think is a really important signal that we're gonna take uh, that seriously to be able to assess 10 years from now, whether we've moved the needle or not. Thank you, Eric. Does anyone have any, any questions? Okay, well, enjoy the rest of the meeting. I'll, I'm looking forward to it myself. Thank you.